Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. Today we're talking shipping fish again. So we did a bit of a test a few weeks back about how I ship fish. And um, so generally what you'll get is something like this. It's a cardboard box emblazoned with fragile or fish or some kind of care stickers, live fish, something along those lines. And then inside the plastic, inside the cardboard box is a polystyrene box. This really thick, high density polystyrene, so it retains the heat quite well uh, and gives you ample space to store your fish. Uh, and I'm generally trying to get the perfect balance between something that's good for the fish, because that's the number one priority, so it has to be uh, as much safety and care of the fish as possible, and something that's economical so something that it makes it worthwhile for the buyer for you guys if you're buying these fish so that's why I go with this one because this is the maximum size for a small parcel in the UK that presents an issue in and of itself so these are the typical size of bags that I use so how I normally bag fish would take a bag like this if it was a guppy for instance or a juvenile pleco or something along those lines that's kind of enough uh, water in there what you would do is take the big bag go from the top squeeze it down so as you have a minimum of half and half water to air and um, I tend to go kind of one third two thirds something along those lines and the reason for that is I'll just show you my technique while we do this so I'll generally spin it round so it gets it nice and tight that affords a little bit of protection for the fish as well if nothing else because the bag isn't too saggy or soggy soggy bag isn't too saggy uh, and doesn't let the bag collapse when it's in there. I'll either tie this in a knot like this or use my heat sealer uh, to create that um, and then with these bags I will generally double bag them and the reason I tend to not use the heat sealer with these bags is because they're quite thin and it, it just doesn't hold very well. Um, so I'll double bag that normally and that will go in the box like so and it fits quite well so I need to leave some space for a heat pack can't have the heat pack directly touching the bags otherwise um, it just makes them a little bit too hot so that's a bag like that that's what we would normally do so the other type of bag that I use are these these are a lot thicker and these are breather bags and the way they work I'll fill this up and show you so this is the breather bag on this side and this is your regular fish bag and the way that these work is when this is bagged up, all up here is air, so it's got oxygen, you've got your fish in here and when the water or the fish and the water are letting out carbon dioxide, it can't escape this bag, so that's why you've got all this air in here, so you can allow that gas exchange to happen there. The fish gets the oxygen it needs, it'll survive in there. I've had fish get lost for about a week uh, and that'll generally help them survive all the time that it needs, but it takes up quite a bit of space and as you can see, Um, I can only really fit three of those into a bag this size. So the difference between this bag here with all its air, and this is the breather bag, is that this has, it's a lot thicker, but it's made out of a special membrane where carbon dioxide can escape and oxygen can get in through the bag. And what you tend to do with these ones is you just fill them up with water. So you don't have any air or very little air at all. And that's kind of the size that you use here. And I use my heat sealer to seal these ones up. So the way these ones work, like I say, they're a bit thicker, so they're more suited to the heat sealer. Uh, and I also quite like these because they've got a square bottom, so they'll sit flat. Again, a little bit more stable. So I do tend to try and use theirs, use these where I can. You, essentially, you just get them into your heat sealer. I'm kind of doing this backwards with the sink on this side, just for the camera. I normally do it the other way around. You get it as flat as you can, get the water as close as you can to the top. Make sure your heat sealer is switched on. And you're done, you're good to go. And that's generally safe as houses. So what I would do then, you can't double bag these because that interferes with the gas exchange. So. That's why they're again, they're a little bit thicker. That then just sits in the box. Excuse the dog trying to dig a hole in the couch over there. So as you see with the flat bottom, they can just sit in there nice and neat and I could probably fit eight to 10 of them in there. No problem at all. Um, 
So I think they're slightly better fit for larger orders. So these can take quite a, quite a battering without going wrong. So here's a bit of a practical example. Here's three fish that someone has ordered on my website. Um, if you're watching this on the day the video comes out or soon after, you may well already have these fish in your aquarium. Um, three breather bags. So as you can see here, use the heat sealer. Well, if it ever decides to focus. Use the heat sealer, so we have one layer down there, another layer up the top. Very little, if any, oxygen in the bag at all. But they're pretty tough, and you can see the fish in there. Happy enough. So they're doing fine. They go into the box as so. And as you can see, because they're such smaller bags, I can afford more space and to bag them individually so we don't have any problems that way and this person's also ordered some food in there so we put that in there and then I will get a load of packing material it might be bubble wrap or something like that but I'll probably use some kitchen roll to surround the fish themselves so again that just gives that layer of extra um, breathable protection and then add in a heat pack and we're good to go um, the heat packs if you're shipping fish this particular brand that I've been using for a while it's fine but it does need a good half hour out in the open to get up to temperature before you add it into the box so I'll add that in afterwards and then with the top you might remember from my last video um, I found that if I sealed it too tightly so if I completely seal this with tape all the way around no air can get in Again, that's bad for the fish if they're using breather bags, but it's also bad for the heat pack because this relies on having access to air to be able to um, keep the temperature up. So I will just put that on and tape it round once. Still, that little crack there gives it enough um, to get air in, but also to retain the heat. And then it goes into the big bag and off to the customer. When it comes to you receiving your fish, so if you get one of these bags, that's the, the normal type with the water and the air, I just plop them in an aquarium, leave them there to sit for kind of 15, 20 minutes, and that gets it up to temperature. So any fish that I receive, the first thing that I want to do is temperature match it as much as possible, because I think the biggest problem that you get with anything is if the temperature's out by too much, um, you shock the fish more than you would shock it with a pH swing or more than you would shock it with a massive ammonia swing or ammonia crash or any of those things get it up to temperature so with this bag just float it in the water like this with the breather bags you can't really do that or the advice is you shouldn't do that because that stops that exchange of gases um, I have done it in the past and it doesn't really I've never had a problem but again you shouldn't According to the instructions, you shouldn't do that. So what I generally tend to do with those ones is I'll just set it on top of the aquarium. Leave it a little bit longer, maybe 20 or 30 minutes. That generally gets it up to the right sort of temperature. If, you, if it doesn't work for you, maybe sit it on top of a light, for instance, in your aquarium. Um, sit it just in a warm room for a bit longer. It really doesn't matter how you achieve it, but get it somewhere near the right temperature. When it comes to actually getting your fish in there, take a net, take a bucket, dip the net because you want to get your net wet because if you have a dry net it can harm the fish so some fish you can get their scales can get knocked off with a dry net or they can get caught up in it. Bad things can happen. Uh, take your net, put it on your bucket like so, grab your fish, um, snip off the top and literally just push, dump it in there, get your fish in the net and as quick as you can, whoosh, straight into the aquarium. I say all this as the way that I do it. I don't want to be prescriptive and I won't shout at you if you do it a slightly different way. So what I've just described there is my preferred method and that's called the plop and drop. So you get it out of the bag that's been shipped in and into the aquarium as quickly as possible. The people who don't like that will argue that uh, you're not matching all the water parameters and they are quite right, you're not. Um, I believe Purely because I've been doing this for years and years, um, I believe that that method, the plop and drop method, is the best for fish that have been shipped for a, a while because they've been in transit for a one day, two days, three days, something like that. If there are things that are going to go wrong, it generally tends to be 
um, the ammonia will have built up in the bag so fish has been pooping and peeing in there for a couple of days that ammonia builds up but because of the way that the oxygen has been used up as well that ammonia um, it isn't quite as toxic to the fish as it would be under normal circumstances so if there was the free movement of um, oxygen and carbon dioxide that would be a bit more of a problem um, again with the breather bags obviously it is a bit better that gas exchange but it's still it, I've not seen it to those levels that it would make a difference so when that goes wrong what happens is you open that bag the oxygen rushes into that bag the pH swings completely and the ammonia gets a lot more toxic for the fish that's why I think speed is of the essence get the fish out of the bag uh, and get it into your aquarium now if your aquarium is at a different pH or is at a different hardness or any of the other parameters generally your fish will adapt to that and um, I would check with wherever you're buying the fish what kind of pH they're being kept in what kind of water parameters and try and match them up as best you can but I've bought fish from all over the, the, the world even uh, coming from completely different parameters and I've always used the plop and drop method and never really had a problem when I had saltwater fish I did on the advice of many people use the drip acclimation method where you get your fish into some kind of body of water and uh, whether it be a mug a cup a bucket whatever it is and drip water from the destination aquarium into there so as over time those parameters even up perfectly acceptable I have done it for some discus where I've bought them and I know that I've uh, traveled myself with them so I know they've only been in the bag for maybe four hours or something like that if I've been driving them there's nothing wrong with that method it's just not my preferred method I won't shout at you if that's the method you choose if you buy fish from me and um, it's completely up to the buyer I just wanted to share with you the way that I do it so I hope you found that useful and um, let me know your tips and tricks in the comments of how you ship fish or how you receive fish and uh, let me know what you've found has worked for you in the past all these guys here this is my guppies and endlers over here these will all be available in the new year for purchase so if you fancy seeing how i do it by all means jump on the website aquariumadventures.co.uk uh, order some fish at the moment i'm only shipping fish with the priority shipping purely because of the time of year and the whole covid thing that's going on the shipping is going really slow so again the safety of the fish is my top priority so i want to make sure that they're looked after Maybe in the new year when it settles down a bit we'll go back to the, the cheaper versions where it's all done in first class. Um, but yeah, we've got some beautiful tiger endlers, blue star endlers, wild guppies, blonde blush endlers, general muck guppies, the whole shebang. They're all breeding like crazy at the moment. So we should have lots of fish for you in the new year. Anyway, hope you found that useful. If you've got any questions or concerns or comments, let me know in the description down below. And if this is your first time here and you like this kind of thing, click that subscribe button. It really helps me out. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye.